mutually exclusive mean, yeah, means that you, you choose one or you choose another, right? The projects mutually exclude each other. But using the rate of return for mutually exclusive projects can be tricky. And I'll give you an example that, that is um, sort of maybe a little bit real life like. Let's say that you get a new job and your boss tells you that you have, uh, that the company has, let's say, um, a minimum attractive rate of return of, you know, something like 10%. Um, I want you to find some things to invest in, find some choices, and, uh, and then, you know, make some investments and see how much money you can make for the company. And let's say you, you look at a project where uh, it's a $10 investment, but you can earn $20 over the, a year, right? So you invest $10 and you get back 20. And what, what's the rate of return on that? Right, so, so you think about it for a second. If I, I invest $10 today and a year from now I get $20 back, what's the rate of return? 100%, yeah, so people are, are, are correct. That's a 100% rate of return. And remember your boss said that you have a minimum attractive rate of return of 10. So you'd say, wow, 100% rate of return, I'm gonna do that project. What if there was another project where you would invest a thousand dollars and a year later you would get one thousand two hundred dollars back and what would the rate of return be on that maybe sometimes it's easier to, to see these so here's the, the first one i talked about and we're talking about just a one year time horizon i invest ten dollars and i get back 20 right that's a hundred percent return I have another choice where I invest $1,000 and I get back $1,200. What's the rate of return there? Well, it's not 120 as a rate of return 20. Yeah, so this is a 20% rate of return. Okay. Now, remember what your boss said, your, your IRR, or your, sorry, your MAR, let, let's say our MAR, is 10%. And let's say these projects are mutually exclusive. Okay, so if these projects are mutually exclusive, which one do you take? Yeah, it, intuitively, well, some people say the first, some people say the second. Well, I mean, the first one, I mean, let's just think about it. The first one earns 100% rate of return. That's pretty good. I mean, yeah, that's, that's pretty good. The second one only earns 20%. It's only earning a fifth of the rate of return. Well, some interesting things. Someone says, depends how many times you can invest in the first one. Let's just say you can only invest once. I think if, if these are mutually exclusive and you can only pick one, I don't think your boss would be very happy if you would pick the first one. I mean, you might go to him or her and say, yeah, but look, I did the analysis. It's a hundred percent. It's a hundred percent return. You've got to be happy with that. And the, the boss might just say, well, clean out your desk <laughs> because you, you could have earned the company $200 and you earned the company $10. So, so, so how, do, how, do I, how do I choose, right? How do I, how do I pick? How, then then is, this, is this rate of return monkey business worth anything? What does it, I mean, what does it mean? A lot of people intuitively would say, hey, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna earn $200. Now, there's, there's sort of a question, right? And that someone actually kind of hinted at too. They said it would depend how many times you could invest in that first one. So, so what would be, you know, what, what are some of the issues that you see with this somewhat silly problem, right? It's, 
so yes, they're, both of these exceed the mark, but remember they're mutually exclusive, which means I can only pick one. And if I pick one, I can't pick the other. Someone says it uses more capital. Yes, now you're getting close. You're getting close. So, so what? Um, I mean, what are what are some of the other issues? Like, there's some questions that would arise. I mean, you know, you might ask, well, how much money did my boss say I was allowed to invest? Right? Like, if if the boss gave you a thousand dollars to invest and their minimum rate of return was 10 percent and you invest the thousand dollars in project in the second project earn your boss your company 20 percent you've used all the thousand dollars he gave you if you invest in project the first project then it kind of begs the question what did you what did you do with the other nine hundred and ninety dollars? Right. So someone's kind of getting getting closer to sort of understanding. Let's say, but you know, we could we could do a present worth, but someone else has just said something very important, and and that you know, I, I said what what happens to the other nine hundred and ninety dollars? Right, they'll say, here's the $990. What the heck did we do with it? Well, let's say, let's say that any money you didn't use, other people in the company were allowed to use. Okay. So let, let's say, let's say, hypothetically, stay with me for a second, because this gets us to, to where I want to go. If your boss gave you a thousand dollars. And you could only pick one of these projects, and you pick the first project. So you only use ten dollars of your thousand. And let's say that after you get to make your choice, then whatever's left over from your thousand, other people in the company get to use. What would be a reasonable assumption on the rate of return? That that nine hundred and ninety dollars would earn. Someone has said the right answer. What I was looking for, and that is, that, well, uh, I, no, sorry. Some someone has said at least twenty percent. Well, well, twenty percent was what this earned, right? But you only had one shot at it. Ah, someone has said the right answer. The mar. The mar. So think about this from a company point of view. The company rule is just in, only invest in projects that at least earn 10%. You were given $1,000. You invested it here. The $990 went to other people because you didn't use it. So the reasonable assumption that we make in finance is that the other $990 is invested somewhere else by someone else in the in the company, and that 990 is going to earn 10%. That is the assumption that we make. In fact, someone has sort of corrected it and someone said at least the mark. In fact, yes, that's true. 